His executive lawn care was Ron's. He had about six trucks. I had Emerald Lawn and Landscaping. I think at the time I had around 10 trucks. And I really respected, you know, you can always tell in a home service brand, if you're an entrepreneur like me in home services, you're looking around your, your community mm -hmm. and you're looking at your competitors. You can usually tell who the cheap guys are. You can usually tell who the guys are that are investing a lot in their business, investing a lot in standard operating procedure and, and trying to make it seamless. And that was something I recognized about executive lawn care and what Ron had built was that all of his trucks were the exact same. You could not tell a difference. They were all 2006 Toyota Tundras hmm. with a very specific setup. And I respected that because that was something that I was learning at the time, the, the importance of consistently having the same setup. Mm -hmm. uh, think about the McDonald's concept and franchising in general. And so I literally picked up the phone. phone. On, the, on my drive from my office to my house one evening, I picked up the phone and I called his office and I said, I'd like to talk to the owner. Are you gonna do your little clap? Can you clap again, sir? All right, so we are here with EJ McCoy, CEO and co-founder of several home service brands. And uh, what we wanted to do is uh, dive a little bit deeper into several of the businesses that you've co-founded that you still have um, a hand in today, leading into the vision and the future of these businesses and the communities that you want to impact and the, the industry that you want to impact as well. And so we're going to we're going to start it off with executive lawn care. So EJ, where did the name executive lawn care come from? Well, I didn't come up with it. So this is the one company that I am still a, a shareholder in that I'm a part of that I did not co-found and that I am not the CEO of. So Executive Lawn Care, the name came from the man I affectionately call now Grandpa Ron mm -hmm. or Grandpa T-Pig because he actually came up with, ironically, the entire term T-Pig, the acronym, mm -hmm. turning poop into gold. That is Grandpa Ron. Well, Grandpa Ron back in 2004, there's a reason he's Grandpa Ron because back in 2004, uh, long before I knew him, he started, I believe by himself, he, he, he founded, I think it was him and his spouse at the time, started lawn and landscaping business called Executive Lawn Care. He had come from the corporate world in 2004. He, um, I don't know what changed, but he left the corporate world. I don't know if he was laid off or if, if, if it was a decision he had made, but he decided he's going to go and mow yards and he named his business Executive Lawn Care coming from, because he was kind of an executive or was in an executive type role in the corporate world and he was coming and kind of starting over and starting to mow yards and he was in his late 40s when he started the business. Um, so how did you get connected with Ron? So fast forward, that was 2004 that Ron started Executive Lawn Care. Fast forward to 2012. Uh, he and I are direct competitors. I'm seeing his trucks at the time. He at, In 2012, he's got about six trucks out mowing yards, mostly in Frisco and Prosper, Texas. I lived in Prosper, Texas and was all over Frisco. That's where the majority of our mowing business and where our growth was going. I had Emerald Lawn and Landscaping. And so we had two competing businesses. Executive Lawn Care was Ron's. He had about six trucks. I had Emerald Lawn and Landscaping. I think at the time I had around 10 trucks. And I really respected you know, you can always tell in a home service brand, if you're an entrepreneur like me in home services, you're looking around your, your community mm -hmm. and you're looking at your competitors. You can usually tell who the cheap guys are. You can usually tell who the guys are that are investing a lot in their business, investing a lot in standard operating procedure and, and trying to make it seamless. And that was something I recognized about executive lawn care and what Ron had built was that all of his trucks were the exact same. You could not tell a difference. They were all 2006 Toyota Tundras hmm. with a very specific setup. And I respected that because that was something that I was learning at the time, the, the importance of consistently having the same setup. Mm -hmm. uh, think about the McDonald's concept and franchising in general. And so I literally picked up the phone. phone. On, the, on my drive from my office to my house one evening, I picked up the phone. It was, I say evening, it was mid-afternoon or so. I was going home. But I picked, I picked up the phone and I called his office. And I said, I'd like to talk to the owner. And somebody else had answered the phone, but they quickly, he quickly picked up. I think I told him who I was. I'm EJ McCoy with Emerald Lawn and Landscaping. Really impressed with his business. I'd just like to talk shop. Mm -hmm. And Ron is the type that will talk shop with anybody. And so 
he and I caught on, got on a call right then, and you could say the rest is history, but <laughs> there's a little more to it. We got to know each other over two years, and after about two or three years of befriending each other, doing business together, we actually worked together in our fertilization and weed control service, the early stages of what is today Chorby's Fertilization and Weed Control Services were able to be helped along and launched from us sub or Ron subcontracting the executive lawn care clients to us as a direct <laughs> competitor. So we're mowing yards, he's mowing yards. We're building a fertilization and weed control portfolio. And even though we're a competitor, he trusted us to give us his fertilization and weed control clients, even though those are his mowing clients. Mm -hmm. And we just had a gentleman's agreement that we weren't gonna steal his, I think it was around two or 300 fertilization clients that he had given to us mm -hmm. to, to service through him. Gotcha. And so that was really the foundation for our fertilization weed control business. Mm -hmm. Ron had a huge hand in helping us through mm -hmm. subcontracting the jobs that he had, allowing us to build up our customer base. Yeah. That was 2012 and 2013. By 2014, I had convinced Ron to sell his business. It took a while. I, I, I kept mm -hmm. prodding him. When are you going to sell? When are you going to sell? Mm -hmm. And 2014, July 1st, 2014. So here we are, June, what, 27th. 2024. 24. So 10 years ago, coming up on mm -hmm. Monday, 10 years ago, is when we acquired uh, Executive Lawn Care. And at the time, Emerald Lawn and Landscaping in 20, 2014 was acquiring Executive Lawn Care. And so we took about a $1.6 million lawn business in, in Emerald Lawn and Landscaping and about a million dollar business in Executive Lawn Care. And on July 1st, those two merged to be one client base and mm -hmm. everything merged after about 90 days the executive lawn care brand was essentially washed away outside of the website hmm. so the logo trucks became emerald trucks yeah and executive lawn care clients became emerald lawn and landscaping clients emerald lawn and landscaping is no more uh, that is today chorby mm -hmm. so that's kind of the origin stories of where executive lawn care got its start, it, it both got its start from Ron, but also kind of the, the timeline up to me and Josh Cahill acquiring Executive mm -hmm. Lawn Care through Emerald Lawn and Landscape. Yeah. So uh, going from 1.6, you said, to and, and adding an additional yeah. million, that's extreme growth virtually overnight. Were you prepared for that we level were. of growth? We were. It ended up, in this case, I wouldn't say in every case, <laughs> but in this case, it ended up being a huge blessing. Uh, it ended up being better than we anticipated on almost every, by almost every measure from day one all the way to today. I could have never imagined how it was going to play out. I was a young, I mean, and I was 29 <clears throat> years old. I was still very young, very ambitious, still am, but, but I did not know how it was going to turn out yeah. at all. Uh, I just knew I wanted to grow my business and he had an awesome business. And I should also mention that it's not like I wrote him a check. Uh, I paid sure. him $600,000 for the business. Uh, $100,000 was essentially for, he had it about the, it was about the value of his vehicles and his equipment. Mm -hmm. And then the other 500,000 was what we had determined, he and I had determined the value of his client base and the recurring nature, you know, it was a mowing business and fertilization weed control and we knew it was very plug and play into our business. Mm -hmm. And so um, the other 500,000 was uh, plugged in, what was just plugged into the system, but it was an asset purchase. We were buying mm -hmm. his clients. Uh, but he trusted us enough to finance it with us. That's where hmm. I think it's really important to develop relationships yeah. in within your, your marketplace and with your competitors uh, because those are the people that may someday uh, buy you or you might, may buy them. And mm -hmm. the more goodwill you have, the better you're yeah. going to be. And, We've worked really well ever since, as, as we just were talking about. He is now, he became our first franchisee five years later. Yep. And now for five years, he's been one of our largest and most successful yep. franchisees. Um, that's a really interesting aspect that I would love to dive into, but I want to keep it, keep it into keep executive, it about executive lawn care. care. And by the way, Grandpa Ron gets very upset if I am mistakenly called co-founder of executive lawn care. He, I, I, I think I had it on, to, on a piece of social media platform one time, and man, I think to this day he still gives me a hard time that he is the co-founder of Executive <laughs> Lawn Care. Well, well you credit can have that one, Grandpa. So um, I want to get to those years, like 
2014, 2015 to where we're at right now, that, that 10 year or so mark. But before I get to that, you hit on something that I think is important that I, I wanna make sure that whoever's watching this takes away, is that you took the initiative to pick up the phone and just call people that yeah. you respected. I don't know that's necessarily a common thing. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But where did that come from? Like, why, why was that something that um, you thought was a value add to you? Well, I had done it prior. Um, you know, I'm not always the greatest at maintaining relationships, you know, buddies that are watching football together on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Don't even hardly understand the concept other than I'm an observer of our culture. <laughs> and other than that, I yeah. have no, no uh, experience with that. But what I was always decent at, still am, uh, but I could do better, is direct communication and direct networking. So I was never very good at going to the Chamber of Commerce meetings and networking that way. You put me in groups, the bigger the group, the less, the more I tend to shy. But what I was always fairly bold in doing was, yeah, I could pick up the phone and call a competitor and just talk shop mm -hmm. and or buy them a meal um, just to connect. In this case, Ron actually had me come over to his, his shop. He was a very, he's a good networker. He's very good at networking, yeah. very social. So he had me over to his shop. We walked. We hit it off. Uh, and and we've never looked back. Yeah, but it wasn't the first time. Uh, in the same sense, um, I've always been very bold in simply asking people to lunch and willing to buy them lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, the lawn care millionaire Jonathan Potoshnik of Service Autopilot and City Turf, same thing. Uh, I got connected through my business partner who discovered his technology. His mm -hmm. uh, his at the time was a very new technology, Service Autopilot. This is in spring of 2011. It was I don't think he, they had a hundred customers. Yeah, and we had discovered that he was also the co-founder of City Turf, which we knew they were a direct competitor. And of course he was on YouTube and we did the same thing. Hey, let me buy you lunch. And as much as I possibly could, I was always offering and buying him mm -hmm. lunch to pick his brain and to learn. Same thing with Ron uh, and with Executive Lawn Care. Yeah. Just call people, connect with people. Today, back then it wasn't so much direct messaging, but direct message people. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's a lot of value in being intentional with your networking and not necessarily shotgunning it out yeah. and, you know, connecting with a bunch of people on LinkedIn just for the sake of connecting with them. I think there's a lot more value in being intentional with the conversations that you're trying to have. Uh, with I have done both. And in my experience, it is far more valuable to just yeah. do individual direct connections. Yeah, love it. All right. So after the acquisition, you guys have uh, uh, took however long it took for everything to get transferred over? About three months. Three months or so. Okay, so walk me through some milestones between that point and where we're Absolutely. at Absolutely, right so now. again, we, we didn't know. We didn't know what things were. I'll tell you this, when we bought Executive Lawn Care, there was no intention of Executive Lawn Care living another 10 years. The intent <laughs> was that business would go away, it would become Emerald Lawn and Landscaping, and we would continue to grow our business. Fast forward a year and a half, so not very long, mid-2014 mid to the end of 2015. Again, I'm still in my 20, well, by now I'm in my early 30s, but at this point in my business, I don't have a long-term clear path. See, today, mm. I can tell you, I, I have a 10-year, 15-year, 20-year, I can see. Now, it'll go in a lot of different ways. It's pretty broad how things will actually play out. But back then, I did not know. I didn't know if I was going to be in the lawn and landscaping business in five or ten years. I was just trying to grow what I knew how to do. And I'll remember my wife when, when we took that risk, and it did. I, you, I answered the question earlier, uh, it went well. Uh, but I remember my wife specifically said, she said, I'm not one bit worried about this purchase and the risk of taking on this debt and buying this business because if there's one thing I knew, and this is what my wife said, there's, there's one thing I knew, it's mowing, it's lawn mowing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a year and a half later, I uh, we, we were having labor challenges like so many do in the mowing side, the maintenance side. So many in the business yeah. say today that there's no money in the maintenance side, especially in residential. I had already kind of proven that, but what's really challenging is the labor, keeping people behind the weed eater, behind the lawnmower in mm -hmm. a residential setting, that's really tough. And we were using H2B visa, uh, the people that came in on the H2B visa program seasonally, that's the same thing Executive Lawn Care was doing. Again, it was very plug and play. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we got an awesome amount of talent out of the Executive Lawn Care purchase. Uh, people that had been trained and working under the H2B program for Ron 
for years upon years. Mm. That was one of the value adds to the business. There was actually three. There was that, there was the website itself, and there was the client base. Mm. And those mm -hmm. were the three things I saw value in. Uh, and so fast forward 2016, we're not using the website at all. And we're having these labor challenges. And so I had this idea. I had the idea that what was Emerald Lawn and Landscaping was going to become weed extinguishers. It was going to become more like just a fertilization weed control business because at the time, this is what I would preach. What takes, whereas mowing takes 135 clients, two people to maintain, two full-time employees, mm -hmm. 135 clients. Fertilization weed control, I can have 600 clients for one employee. Mm -hmm. And I don't speak Spanish. And so that, that, that one employee on fertilization weed control usually needed to be, it needed to speak English. The mowing crews did not speak English. Yeah. So there was all sorts of these benefits that I viewed as benefits when mm -hmm. I was 31 years old that today were, were really just my inexperience as an entrepreneur uh, coming out. And I was almost reactively trying mm -hmm. to respond to n not actually addressing the challenge of people yeah. and people in business. And I learned it around that time that People are in all businesses because all businesses are there to serve people. Yeah, and so we did somewhat of a reactionary thing. We we split off and we said we're going to become weed extinguishers, and so, and, and and someday our mowing business is going to get sold to this entity. We're going to spin off, and that spin off is Executive Lawn Care. Hmm. And so in 2016, in January 2016, I partnered Josh and I, who owned uh, Emerald Lawn and Landscaping. We got paid, uh, or, or we had somebody come to us, uh, Josh's, one of Josh's best friends, David. We got approached, he wanted to get out of the corporate world, Sound, this sounds familiar, kind of very franchise-like. Mm -hmm. He wanted to get out of the corporate world, he wanted to put some money into his own business, but he needed the know-how. And Josh and I had that know-how. And so David, who was bilingual, and I believed at the time that was very necessary, mm -hmm. He was bilingual and that was kind of a lie because he didn't know as much Spanish as he really <laughs> let on. But anyways, he sounds learned, familiar. He has since learned it. But uh, uh, anyway, David, the, the idea was, was we were going to provide the website of executivelawncare.net and David was going to build this business. We also gave David 200 clients, so our least desirable Emerald Lawn Care clients. So some of these were former executive lawn care clients. Some of them were, were weed extinguishers clients, but they weren't getting fertilization and weed control. They were only getting mowing and it was the lowest frequency mm -hmm. of mowing we would offer, those kinds of things. That's what I mean by least desirable. They were the, um, uh, the, the clients that do less, that do right. less services. Yep. And so David took that foundation and he built this business from 2016 to around 2021 to over 3,000 clients. Wow. Uh, which ended up becoming a competitor as things evolved, mm -hmm. uh, it ended up becoming a competitor of weed extinguishers and what is today Chorby. Uh, so e executive lawn care to this day, it mows yards, it does shrub trimming, and it does mulch installation. That's it. Mm -hmm. Those are the three services. That's what allowed, I believe, what allowed it to scale so yeah. fast. It had a very specific focus. Still using H2B? No, good question. So 2016, 2015, 2016 were our last years to use H2B by and large. We've attempted to bring it back in some capacity and much smaller capacities over the years. But because of the challenges all the way in Congress in Washington, D.C. of the H2B program, we, we were not able to get our guys mm -hmm. in 2016. And so that concept, almost as soon as Executive Lawn Care got spun into its own business, uh, its own business kind of version to Executive Lawn Care in 2016, the H2B program essentially for us got shut down. Mm -hmm. And so we had to move our entire business model to a subcontractor model where we subcontract the mowing. We handle all of the office, all of the billing, all of the communications with the client. And we have subcontractors that are using their own vehicles, their own equipment and mm -hmm. getting paid a percentage of the job. We moved to that model. And so today executive lawn care mows over 3000 jobs a week. They don't own a single lawnmower. Mm -hmm. They own one weed eater and one blower or something along those lines. I don't even actually know. Mm -hmm. So that contractor model, um, what makes it successful and what are the biggest challenges? Well, what makes it successful is you can focus on gaining <clears throat> clients. You're not focused on fixing, you know, with, with 3,000 lawns a week, if we were doing this in-house, 
then we would have roughly 50 lawnmowers mm -hmm. and 50 individuals working for us. And so we would be constantly maintaining that equipment and focused mm -hmm. on maintaining that equipment and focused on buying new equipment every year. And of course, we're not just talking lawnmowers, we're talking weed eaters, edgers, blowers, trailers, trucks, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And so you eliminate that. The negative to it is the big, there's a lot of, there's a lot of benefits by the way, but there's mm -hmm. also a lot of negatives. I'll just touch on the two big ones. The, the other negative is, is you can't, you can't wrap your vehicles. Mm. So the vehicles are unmarked and your yeah. people are not logoed. That is right. to me the worst, the worst thing about it. Uh, but it has, the other piece to it is that your, your costs are very fixed. You know what, every single job, if I'm selling a lawn mowing job for 30 bucks, I know exactly how much. It's like pay for performance, which is very beneficial to, yep. to both, to most parties as long as it's done right. It's very similar to pay for, for I can't say that, pay for performance. Yeah, so uh, how do you maintain quality for someone that doesn't directly work for you? Well, you still, they still do work directly I, for you. If there's a the quality quotes, issue, yeah. you fire them. And so the way yeah. you maintain is the same way you maintain anything else, is you train, mm -hmm. you coach up, or you coach out. Is there any, um, any merit to you can't improve the quality uh, to a certain extent because that contractor doesn't have as much ownership? In the business. No, the contractor actually should have more ownership in a lot of ways. And yeah. in fact, if you spoke to Luis, uh, the gentleman who has been with me, actually, he came over. He was one of those pe those talent that came with Executive Lawn Care to Emerald Lawn and Landscaping mm -hmm. and, and stayed with me and now today works for Chorby doing that same job and leading those guys. He led the he led 30 plus H2B uh, mm -hmm. in-house W2 employees. And today and since he has led 50 plus subcontractors, this is more so over at Chorby, but it's yeah. the same concept. Yeah. He'll tell you that the contractors have more ownership because they are running their own businesses. Mm -hmm. They're using their own equipment, their own vehicles, they're running their own businesses. They're simply partnering with us, shaking, mm -hmm. you know, sh handshake, mm -hmm. partnering with us to handle their office, to handle the sales, to handle an enormous piece of their business. Mm -hmm. They're getting guaranteed to get a paycheck every Thursday for the previous week's work, so they're, they're not having to chase people down for yeah. money. But at the same time, all we're giving them is a list every day to go and do. Mm -hmm. And if they and, and, and we have KPIs, we have a, a an RFI raving fan index measurement system. Mm -hmm. And if the and if the the contractor's not performing, they're either coached up or they're coached out. Yeah, yeah. I I think that they're the value of it is incredibly high. But I think there might be some that uh, think it's not attainable or just have misconceptions about it. Lots of misconceptions about contractor, subcontractor mm -hmm. work, especially in the mowing business. But a lot of those misconceptions, there is elements of truth, especially to the negatives. Mm -hmm. So uh, was it hard then and is it still hard now to find new contractors? We do not have challenges with that at, at, and haven't at either company in some time. It does take a balance, and mm -hmm. it, it's because we've been very blessed to have uh, a good team members at both companies. Mm -hmm. But but in executive lawn care, we've had almost the same team members uh, for five, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. And maintaining those team members, no, it has not been. But there have been seasons. Some seasons have been worse than others. Yeah. Uh, but as long as you communicate well with your contractors, again, you train them up, you tell them what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, we established 10 things you must do on every property and you train them in those 10 things and mm -hmm. you keep them accountable to those 10 things. Generally speaking, we have had far fewer issues finding subcontractors than what we have had in the past finding H2B yeah. talent and it's virtually impossible to find work team full-time w-2 employees yeah. outside of that yeah. program uh does it cost you more money to have a w-2 employee doing this work or a contractor doing the work it's apples and oranges really it costs more money having subcontractors they mm -hmm. get paid more but again they're covering their cost of their trucks the yeah. cost of their fuel the cost of their so, so there's all these fixed there's there's all these non-fixed costs that mm -hmm. now become fixed so in some ways it's apples and oranges uh, I would venture to say that as a whole, it is far, e far easier and far better time versus money, money mm -hmm. versus time. If you've got the volume, if you've only got 100 customers, it's hard to make that what makes sense. Mm -hmm. Even if you only have 250 or 300 customers, it's really hard to make the subcontractor model work. 
Yeah, but it's attainable. It's very attainable. Cool. All right, so we get to 2021. David has got it up to, you said 3,000? North of 3,000. North I, I, because I've not ever been involved in the day-to-day, I'm mm-hmm. giving broad numbers sure. because I, I don't know the exact numbers. Yeah. I, I, to be clear, uh, when Executive Lawn Care spun off of uh, what was Emerald Lawn Care back in, uh, in January of 2016, since that point, I have only ever been a member of the of the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am not an officer of the company. I never have been. Yeah. Okay. Well, could you speak to uh, uh, maybe new talent that's come in over the past couple of years at Executive Lawn Care? So and yeah, who's so leading David, it? So David, my business partner, he spent approximately five years building the business. Uh, my other business partner, Josh, operated or ran it for a year part time. We, we we had we had a, a staff by that point that was really taking care of things. Mm-hmm. Well, in the last two years, we brought in a, a COO, Mark, who is the COO of Executive Lawn Care, and he runs the, that entire team. And it's a team of of roughly seven individuals, two mm-hmm. guys that are managing our contractors, another four to five that are managing the office and the phone and sales. Mark himself operates and mm-hmm. does sales and so on and so forth. And so we brought him in. We've also got Jeremy Langlitz with White Picket Team, who through White Picket Team, it's almost a fractional type setup. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, is, he is president of executive lawn care, but it's a fractional type position. So he's got other, he's got other jobs. He's vice president of business mm-hmm. administration at White Picket Team and does a lot for me. But as one of his jobs is he is president of executive lawn care. Mm-hmm. And he's a, as president, again, he doesn't work in the day to day. As president, his primary job is to help guide the financial yeah. focus, the financial future, while Mark, as chief operating officer, handles the day-to-day. Yeah, love it. So what does the future look like for, for executive, executive lawn care? Yeah. Keep growing that model. Keep it simple. Yeah. Mow yards, trim shrubs, mm-hmm. install mulch, and do that instead of for 3,000 customers, do that for 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 mm-hmm. uh, throughout Dallas-Fort Worth and maybe even in the future throughout Texas. 